It was a vibrant, growing community uh, following World War II, a period of growth which was reflected all over the country. For the 40 years that I was at Temple Edith Yashurin, it was a, a great privilege and a pleasure to be part of that growth. Rabbi Hyman was, I had the privilege of, and the pleasure of working with, I believe, one of the finest rabbis of his time. He was, in every sense, in a word, a mensch. And I considered him my mentor and my friend. And I was proud to be his colleague. We had decided by the 60s, we had decided that we needed to move to larger quarters. So there was a very exciting period of building a new facility. We had a transitional period for a two or three years, they held special high holiday services at the Onondaga County War Memorial. And from there, uh, we went for the high holidays to our new quarters on Kimber Road, where we had a sanctuary that accommodated 3,000 people. And frequently, we would fill that place. Sing to all your faith or proclaim His Holiness. Rabbi Sherman, he had a difficult role because he followed a very popular rabbi. He came at a time when change was not only taking place in Syracuse but all over the country. He came at a time when women for the first time were becoming enfranchised and he was able to play into that very successfully I believe. This uh, scrapbook obviously brings back memories and in the first page, it mentions my retirement after 40 years in Syracuse. And I'm reading from the article in the newspaper where it says, God called him aboard a warship and his career took him to Adith Yashurin. And he refers to an experience that I shall never forget in which I conducted a service on board a troop ship crossing the Pacific Ocean in 1943, where they needed somebody to sing the Kol Nidre service. And uh, it was, somehow I found myself volunteering for that. And I still remember that Kol Nidre service as one of the most spiritual moments of my life in the middle of the Pacific Ocean surrounded by men and women literally hanging from the yard arms of that troop ship. There was, as they say, not an atheist among us. Bottom line is, the ship got through unscathed, and so did I, and I'm very grateful for the experience. And so I was in charge of all musical activities and in charge of all preparations for bar and bat mitzvah, confirmation. And I would do a series of concerts as well because I was very fond of commissioning new musical works. That was very inspiring for me. There's a picture here of myself as a young man of about 14 years old in Lynn, Massachusetts at the congregation Anshus Fard, where I sang in the choir. There's even a picture here of me with Ellie Wiesel, who was the man of the year at our congregation. There's a picture of me singing at the Jewish home. That was one of the great privileges and pleasures of my life on Mother's Day. Today, with the advent of the so-called social networking, former students of mine send messages. I get messages from people that I haven't seen for 30, 40, sometimes 50 years. So it's been a wonderful experience. 
being around at a time when communication has become so easy and so facile. I've been having fun in New York, becoming part of the great New York audience. It's been a great inspiration to me. I've also managed to participate in adding to it to some small degree by writing a musical about my own experience. I wrote a sort of a uh, satire on synagogue life. I call it difference of opinion, which sort of sums up a lot of what's taking place not only in Jewish life, but all religious life. People love to be together. They like to form communities. They want to pray together. They want to laugh together. They love to eat together. And they do that in the same way whether they're in Tel Aviv, whether they're in Yerushalayim, whether they're in Syracuse or New York. We form little conclaves called a shul, a synagogue, a community center. They love to be together. Jews were meant to be together. It's a wonderful community. Like many communities in America during the recent years, it has suffered economically. And I believe that's a, one of the reasons why there's a decline in membership, but it's also a period of change and challenge for all Jewish life. And I think we have to face those challenges, and I'm sure and I'm confident that in time we will solve those problems and move on. As they say, Am Yisrael Chai, Israel will live.